everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Jen X Psychic Saved. I was saved out of the occult eight years ago by Jesus Christ. And I am dedicating my YouTube channel to exposing the fruitless deeds of darkness, sharing testimonies of others who have been rescued from the pit of darkness, the new age, um, psychic mediumship and the occult. But this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, if anybody doesn't know, I'm also on TikTok and I recently made a video sharing with my viewers the fact that the book, The Circle Maker, is not really what you think. It was written by a Christian, but we really need to look further. The Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 1 to test the spirit. So before we pick up a book, before we hear, a, well, when we hear a message, when we're looking at a book, we need to really go to the word of God and see if it lines up. I'm very thankful that somebody on my Instagram feed wrote to me privately when they had some red flags about this book, The Circle Maker. Today joining me is a very good friend of mine and my sister in Christ, Leanne, who is going to share with us her experience, which thank God it's not um, that in depth, but her experience with the circle maker. And we're going to we're going to expose the truth about this book. So I just want to welcome you, Leanne. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you, Jen. And thank you for inviting me to be here, because it's something that I am noticing is becoming a very popular book. I actually re I realized that it's a number one bestseller. Um, from Batterson, who is actually the pastor of a very well-renowned, world-renowned church in America, actually. So he actually has a Bible study that goes with his book as well. And that is, that's going to be my main focus because I feel that that's very um, dangerous based on the information that he's sharing in his Bible study and what he's advising people to do. But this book came to my attention because my family and I we're looking for a new church. And we had actually been attending a church for about five months when I realized in their, um, they have a book section in the lobby where they promote books. And one of the books on the shelf was The Circle Maker. And that was the very first time I saw this book. And my discernment radar immediately went off. I saw the cover and thought, hmm, Circle Maker, that doesn't sound... Christian, it actually sounds like witchcraft. That was the first word that came to my mind, witchcraft. But I didn't think too much past that at the time because I was so focused on trying to understand where our church stands as far as what their theology is and trying to get to know the members of the congregation. I was Oh, there's a lot on my plate as far as trying to figure out if this was the right church for us. So I had that book in the back of my mind, but then I saw your video exposing the book and bringing attention to the fact that it is heretical. And so then I did research on it. What I found is pretty disturbing. Wow. Um, you know, it seems to me that as a Christian now, it would be obvious to us certain books, certain um, sections, right? If we're in Barnes and Noble and uh, we see an, an occult section now, I wouldn't be headed to the occult section. But if I go to the Christian section and I see the circle maker there, I'm thinking, hey, okay, this must be a godly book then. He's a Christian, he's a pastor. When you see it on the bookshelf in your church, you're thinking, hey, they must have screened this book, the church, it must be okay. But this goes back again to first John four, one. And I want to encourage people always to test the spirits, no matter where you're seeing the book, the video, the message, whatever it may be. Um, I'm so glad that you brought up the word witchcraft, Leanne, because to be honest with you, my research also has led me to the same conclusion. So I'm going to hand you the mic. And I just want to say that we are going to be referencing, of course, scripture, like we always do, but also to um, resources. GotQuestions.org is a great resource, very biblical. And I will post the link down below for GotQuestions.org in regard to prayer circles and also Chalice.com. You can read his whole bio online and I will link the article from Chalice.com down below as well. But Leanne, can you share with us what you discovered and why it really is witchcraft? Yes. So first, I would like to make it clear that I have not read this book because of 
the discernment that I have, I'm choosing to guard my mind and I'm not going to read this book, but I have done a lot of research in that research. I have gotten a clear understanding of what this book is about, including a Bible study that uh, Batterson has created to go along with his book that he teaches not only in his church, but has shared with the world so that other churches can participate as well. I would just like to say also that in the introduction of his Bible study, the very first thing that I noticed was that he demonstrates how to draw a circle, which emulates the exact thing that a Wiccan would consider a magic circle. Now, in this demonstration, he stands in the middle of a he stands in one spot and he takes chalk and he draws a circle around himself three times with chalk clockwise. So I took note of that. And in my research, in comparing it with witchcraft, I realized that the exact definition of a magic circle, according to Wiccans, is a sphere or space that is marked out with chalk or salt. And it may also be visualized and it has to be three times clockwise. So Batterson is literally copying, whether he knows it or not, uh, whether he realizes it or not, he is emulating exactly what a witch would do when they're forming a circle that they are going to stand in and repeat what they want until it comes to fruition. This is this is really alarming, but it's also really sad because we know that the devil is a counterfeit and we know that as Christians, we can be oppressed, not possessed, but oppressed. And I also want to make it clear that we are not attacking Batterson at all. We are praying for him to see the truth. This is a best-selling book. And like you're saying, it's a Bible study. It's in churches. I mean, this is dangerous. So mm-hmm. let's get into a little bit. Well, what even is this book about? What is he saying? And a great example of, of where you noted the witchcraft, but what about manifesting, name it and claim it? He denies it, but if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> exactly. What do you have to say, Leanne? Yeah. So he... He he mentions and he actually says in the introduction of um, his Bible study that it's not enough to just read the Bible. These are his words. It's not enough to just read the Bible. You must pray circles around scripture as well as other desires of your heart. That draws dangerously close to name it and claim it. Although Batterson denies that this is name it and claim it, the evidence says otherwise. Um, He goes on to say that if you draw the circle, God will multiply the miracles. Nowhere in scripture does it say this. Right. As a matter of fact, if I'm going to be re, uh, referencing the dotquestions.org article, and it mentions that the Bible does not attribute power to proximity or visualization. For example, a prayer for a person to find employment is no more or less powerful offered sitting in one's home than offered while walking around the office building. To believe that prayers offered in one setting or position are more effective than those offered at another time or in another manner is more superstitious than it is scriptural. Likewise, visualizing one's prayer with a prayer circle does not give it more authority. I mean, this is a this is a ritual. That's what it is. And nowhere yes. does the Lord say that we should be performing rituals in our prayer life and to speak to them. So when I hear people saying this book helped them with their prayer life, I believe God does um, use what man intends for harm and, and can bring the good. But also that is against what God says in his word about prayer, the Lord's prayer. When Jesus teaches us the Lord's prayer, that's how to pray. And I don't recall it mentioning drawing a circle and standing in it. Right. We need to be very aware of anyone or anything showing us a new way to pray. God tells us, Jesus tells us in his word exactly how to pray. But Matthew 6, 33 is, it says, we should mention that as well, that it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to be seeking God's word first for that is the ultimate authority. It doesn't say anything about drawing circles or making circles around things to make them come to be. Amen. Prayer is very important as Batterson. I admire the fact that Batterson is, you know, he's advocating for prayer. Yes, that's great. But praying circles specifically around things does not give us some sort of advantage. That's borderline 
it's manipulative and it's it's um, sending the wrong message to unfortunately people who may, may not know the word of God all that well, but they choose to read that book, which happens that happens a lot. People choose to consult extra biblical sources before they choose to read the Bible. So that can get really tricky. So when we say that we talk about this name it and claim it and we talk about manifesting, which is a huge problem. Um, it's a new age practice manifesting, but unfortunately the new age really has infiltrated the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see people like Joel Osteen uh, manifesting. We, we see people in the church thinking, Hey, name it and claim it. You can and should have all of these things because after all ask and ye shall receive. This is a gross misinterpretation of scripture. So when Batterson is telling you to stand in these circles and ask for what you want, really, right? Is he's saying then that will make it happen. That is exactly what he's saying. Yes. And he's claiming that God is okay with that because God wants to give us the desires of our heart. That's another common misinterpretation of the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So what happened? So what else did you find out about this book, Leanne? So I learned that he has said that he was inspired to make this book by the legend of Honi, the circle maker. This comes from the Talmud, which is a Jewish, um, Honi is a Jewish legend. And he he may have been a real person, but uh, the stories of him are tall tales and legends. So in magic, casting circles is used to create a sacred space. And that is what Honey did. So when Batterson says that he's emulating or being inspired by Honey, first of all, Honey is not biblical. He's not a person that's mentioned in the Bible either. He, the Talmud is not regarded as sacred scripture. So the fact that he didn't, con- he's admitting that he didn't consult the Bible to begin with in creating this prayer book or this method of prayer is very alarming in and of itself. Anyone who is looking to Pastor Batterson as a guide or a leader should be aware that he is not referencing scripture, which in the Bible we are told to do. And the the Bible, you know, God's word is there. They give a, uh, Paul gives a warning to the to the leaders of churches that they cannot mislead their flock. You know, there's that's right. Second pay for that. Second Timothy three sixteen tells us that the Bible is sufficient for teaching, correcting, rebuking. And that is something that when you see people saying, oh yeah, God speaks to me through the word, but I need more. I need more than that. Well, then I suppose the more should have been added to the scriptures. Shouldn't it have been? If God is telling you something special, these new revelations, it would have been in the scripture and the canon is closed and the Bible is sufficient for us, for what we need to live an abundant life, to follow God and live the right life. And certainly the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's really sad to me to see false teachers out there because when you're not sharing the truth with people, how can they be saved? How can they be saved? They're going to be that hamster in the wheel like they are in the new age where they're doing drawing circles around themselves. He references Jericho um, walking in circles. What does that have to do with anything I'd like to know. It sounds to me more like he needs to go back and maybe reread scripture Mm -hmm. and go into the context and the culture and cross reference. Also manifesting. um, Listen, we all want to feel good. We all want things that would be great. But Jesus actually said we would have troubles in this world. Jesus deferred to the will of the father in Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, if this cup of wrath could pass me by, he prayed with anguish, sweating blood. But your will be done is what he said. So here we are walking around, always looking for what we want rather than going to the Lord and getting all that we need, which is Christ Jesus. And there was no promise of health and wealth there. And all of these miracles, and that's, I'm not saying God doesn't do miracles. I'm not saying God doesn't heal. He absolutely does. I'm sitting proof of it, but he's not a genie. Exactly. And many people treat him as if he he is. And I think that that's a good, that that's a good example of how people interpret scripture through their desires versus interpreting their desires through scripture. And I think that's what Batterson did here 
is that he interpreted the scriptures through Honi rather than interpreting Honi and what Honi claims through scripture, which is the responsible thing to do. The responsible thing to do is to interpret something you're learning through scripture, not the other way around, because that's when we get into dangerous territory. Absolutely. 100%. And it is interesting to note that this is a bestseller, just like Jesus Calling. Stay tuned for that, everybody. Leanne and I are going to get back together to talk about Jesus Calling, Sarah Young um, in the future. So uh, look forward to that. But this is uh, definitely something that we need to be talking about, that we need to be aware of. I just wanted to say that God does not, and this is again, referencing the God questions, God does not need us to release him or give him permission before he blesses us. He's not waiting for for our permission. We don't have the authority. God has the authority over our lives. Amen. And I would also like to add that I just want to take a moment to tell our viewers and encourage them that the first thing that you should do with any kind of belief or practice that you hear about or learn about is go straight to the Bible. Check the Bible. Is it there? Is it supported by scripture? If not, it's not biblical and it's not from the Lord. Amen. In addition to that, uh, after you do that, I would say also um, you should note how Jesus is being identified. Is he being identified biblically accurately according to the word of God. I I mean, you know, I see so many people, psychics and mediums, and they say Jesus is an ascended master. He's a spirit. He's a teacher. He's a rabbi. He's my spirit guide. Uh, When you start with this name it and claim it stuff, you're acting as if he's a genie and you're really referring to him as your wish maker, your wish granter, rather. You're the wish maker. He's the wish granter. This is not at all biblical. This is not who Jesus is. So be extra careful. And just because something says Christian doesn't make it so. Um, Just in the last couple of minutes, is there anything else that you noted from this Bible study that he that he does. Is the Bible study called the circle maker? So it's based off the book. Yes, it is. It goes along with the book. The um, Bible study follows along through the book, I believe, from my understanding. One other really important point that I would like to make is that the circle maker draws dangerously close to another well-known name it and claim it book slash movie called The Secret, which I'm sure many of our viewers here have heard and seen. It's been around for some years now. And with The Secret, there are groups that practice the methods taught in that book, and their practices closely resemble that of Batterson's The Circle Maker. So, you know, godly prayer, godly prayer does not copy the way of the world. The Secret doesn't claim to be Christian at all. That's not the the secret book doesn't claim to be Christian, but it seems that Batterson has um, taken a lot of what they offer in their book and made it part of the circle maker. Wow. We don't we don't copy the world when it comes to God's prayer or anything related to the Christian walk. So it's not it's not proper to ask God for things using worldly measures. Amen. Amen. And if that is the message that somebody is sending out or a book is supporting, that's a worldly message. And that is not what Jesus came to give us. He didn't come to give us the world. He came to set us apart from the world and give us the kingdom. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy, forgiveness, and truth and eternal life. The devil is a counterfeit. So it's not a surprise to me to see that Batterson is probably oppressed and became susceptible to some unclean spirits. And it's now using the counterfeit, using, and of course, yes, the secret is manifesting and the law of attraction. So there really isn't any difference. And again, Batterson denies it, but uh, but the proof is in the pudding. Right. Uh, Doreen and I made a video about the law of attraction. I'll link that below as well. Doreen Virtue and I, I will link that video uh, down below as well. Um, Leanne, thank you so much for joining me. If, if there's any last words you want to say, go for it. Yes, Jen, thank you for having me on. And I would just like to say a reminder again, is we are not picking or um, trying to call Batterson out. We're calling out the demonic spirits working behind him. We need to be praying for Batterson 
And uh, we need to just pray that God protects him, delivers him, convicts him of what he is doing so that he can turn around and change this. He's influencing a lot of people. Amen. Well said. And I just want to encourage everybody to know that Jesus didn't come here to bring you money, bring you perfect health, but he does love you. And he died on the cross to reconcile us back to God because we are sinners. He loves you. Come to him today as you are and be saved, be free and be forgiven in Christ Jesus. I love you. I love you, Leanne. Thank you so much. I love all of you out there. Check out the resources below and join us next time when we discuss Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. Until then, may God bless you. Bye, Leanne. Bye.